Good morning. Good morning. To this session, it's going to be half an hour on a very, very, very urgent topic on zero tolerance and wiping out harassment. It's also being streamed live uh, and will be recorded. So we hope you do participate and feel excited that we're trying to reach out as much as possible on, on this timely topic. My name is Pablo Jenkins and I'll be moderating today. We have a wonderful panel here, uh, but I also want you to be thinking in the audience, what you sense is emerging on this topic? That when we come a year from now, we will have advanced at a faster rate. What kind of spiral is going? As I mean, it's a very brief introduction to the topic, and if anyone wants translation, there is uh, for English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, on Women's Day last week, uh, Christiane Lagarde uh, published an article on the IMF on the connection between legal protection for women uh, against sexual harassment and inclusive growth. We still know that in all of the world, financial inclusion is both a problem and a cause that makes it harder for women to take some of their own decisions, even though they make a lot of the purchasing decisions in their households, over 80%. But uh, some analysis show that, for example, in places like Sub-Saharan Africa or developing countries, once you have legal protections, you get up to 25% more engagement of women in financial inclusion and in being part of businesses. We'll hear now from some business women here who have had a lot of trajectory and seen a lot of stories. But we know that it needs to go beyond. Um, a quarter of the countries in the world don't have laws against domestic violence yet. Um, and over 360 million women in the work don't have a legal recourse against harassment. Now there's a lot of things that go beyond laws because laws don't make a lot of sense without enforcement. We need a culture in which men and women are able to talk about this have clarity what it means in terms of the governance and the actual behaviors, because otherwise, often the power structure doesn't allow the true reporting and addressing. And some examples have been imperfect and already shown that action can be a very important first step. Uh, in Guatemala, some years ago, they had these 24-hour courts where cases that were reported took an immediate action, and even if not everything was perfectly resolved, it started to change the conversation, and even the way men thought about the masculinity. And, and as you do this, you see that the other important topics, such as how housework gets divided, starts to become an important conversation. Even though these gender reports at the World Economic Forum and at Davos this year was great that all the chair women were all women for the first time ever in the World Economic Forum, I want you to sense the conversation we're having today from a sense that we're close to an inflection point. It's sad to think that the fourth industrial revolution will make us arrive maybe first to Mars and to have these incredible things of autonomous vehicles and still will be decades away from even parity of salaries for women. Because we're changing, but the rate is too slow. And yet, many of us here know there are things that are working that can become a part of a positive spiral. So with that in mind, when true amazing partnership and diversity happens, I think Latin America has a lot of potential. This includes probably a true economic inclusion, but it's really also about like the true human rights. So I want to start with um, uh, Luis Elena Trajano. She is the chairwoman of the board of directors of Magazine Luisa. Over 800 stores, so she has worked up and down through a lot of people that really struggle on what it means to work at all kinds of levels. And and even topics like domestic violence are often not that disconnected from how business can really influence people's lives. Uh, so I want her to introduce us a bit to how this is happening and how business and governance is trying to make a difference uh, here in Latin America. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. People usually do not like to talk about this topic since it is a very hard topic to talk about. I am part of Mulheres do Brasil group, and I've been working on this topic for more than three years, and I knew that every two hours, one woman, one woman is murdered in Brazil. We have TV Luisa, which is live television, and we like to talk about racial equality. For the past 20 years, we've been elected one of the best companies to work in Brazil, and I had never talked about women violence in Brazil because 
I thought we were kind of far from that topic. And eight months ago, one of our managers, she was 37 years old, she had a great career plan and she was murdered by her husband. She left an eight-year-old son who actually watched the murder. And I felt really bad about it. I immediately started a campaign. I went to television. We came up with a committee with lawyers. And we know that the government actually has great actions that are being taken, but oftentimes we do not have access to that. And the population itself does not know about it. In the beginning of January this year, we carried out a survey on sexual and moral harassment with our 18,000 employees at Magazine Luisa. And there's been a lot of confusion on what is moral and sexual harassment. Many people do not tell the difference between them. So I want to start by saying that I'm very happy by being part of this forum. Because many times people do not report harassment. Because many women actually think they are guilty. And women, since they have great economic power as of today, they can do so much. In terms of public policies, let me tell you, 2% of third-party companies are women who suffer from violence. There are many policies in place all around the country, but we have to expand that. Women oftentimes go to the police office, they report, but economically speaking, they cannot move forward to go to court. And statistics show that many times women do not report because they are afraid and because they do not have economic power to do so. And that's why I think this forum is so important. To avoid this type of violence, you know, two we every other two hours women die in Brazil due to harassment. So the first goal I have is to talk about that, to spread the word. My second goal is a bulletin that we came up with to report these issues to business leaders. And thirdly, public policies. So after, I will go into details about that. Thank you. We do a s small project in Costa Rica that someone here said last year next to Christine Lagarde uh, thinking about women's rights. And even when we do things that seem disconnected, we were working with women in technology, young girls, but teaching them to understand the violence from their boyfriends that could arise. And having men be able to discuss from their own sense and denounce it becomes very important because the laws don't work alone. And looking at the kind of governance and policy that it's true and honest uh, requires us to often make internal changes. And uh, <coughs> we have here, uh, a, I think, another wonderful example of, of uh, as someone who's had a lot of experience in family business and family business governance, which in Latin America, that's often a really important place in which to create transformation. Uh, 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 Andrea Grobo Copatel from Los Grobos Group has worked at a cross range from taking a family business and really making it a leader in governance. She's also co-chair of the W20, which in Argentina, in the context of the G20, is bringing this really at the core level. So we, we're seeing these women that are influencing in the amount of people they touch directly through their enterprises, in their countries, in policies. But at the web, how do we scale that? So, uh, and also how women become part of decision making and get better trained to take on these positions of leadership once we really have abolished some of these terrible things like the amount of violence that still exists. So tell us a bit of what you see emerging there and what you're trying to push forward. Good morning, everyone. I think the title of this panel is amazing. Zero tolerance is the way to go. Ah, since we are talking about this issue in several different spaces, that has to do with sexism. This issue is not a natural one. We have to start talking about power and what power meant before. As of today, we see power in a different way. Leaders work in networks, 
we talk about empowerment. So we do not have to talk about power in and of itself, but about networks. And also, we have to talk about manhood. Since women have a lower revenue, they have less power oftentimes. But sometimes women make more money than men. So we do have to talk about manhood. No one is losing power or being less of a man because his wife earns more or because his wife is empowered. So we do have to keep on talking about these topics in different environments so we can change our beliefs. And that comes from our early education, both in Latin America and in the world. And that's why this topic is so important. Something else that is very important in Argentina, since I started working as the co-chair at G W20, and W20 20 stands for Women 20. And in this group, we have to come up with concrete proposals to G20 as to how we can change our current reality. And this has to do with three specific topics, three pillars that we learned from Germany, because W10 20 in Germany works with social, economic, and work inclusion. We also talked about women in rural areas. Because if we have these issues in urban areas, what can we tell about women who are not in urban areas, in rural areas? And that's why in Argentina we started talking about this topic, because in these places there is more of vulnerability and less of communication resources. And we feel confident because we are facilitators. I also have my notepad here. I'm taking notes on everything you say because this is a process of dialogue. We want to hear what you have to say so we can come up with concrete proposals. This is the role of W20 in Argentina. That's why I'm here to listen to you. So we can elaborate on what you say. And that does not only have to do with how women can balance their personal and work life with their family life, on how we can decrease wage differences, but also talk about violence, not only in their workplace, but just like Luisa mentioned, issues with domestic violence, which is something that impacts us a lot, both with in costs and in economic topics for our families and for our countries. And that's why this is so important. is a man in the panel, Mr. Ricardo Amaral, who is the VP for Global Western Union. Thank you very much for being here. Many times we do not mention sexism and other issues and things that our mothers did not understand, such as patriarchy. Because this is a joint burden that we need to both liberate each other from. Of course, it's the oppression and the violence, but you see even the amount of, say, accidents caused by men that often are not great at discussing their feelings and situation and, and often becomes a violent thing to themselves or to the people close by. So I think it's very valuable to have yeah. companies that are touching a lot of people, seeing how this is transforming. Tell us a bit of how you're seeing this within the, the kind of work that you're doing in the region. Perfect. Our company has diversity in the DNA, and that includes the women's part. A company generating 31 transactions per second, of which 50% are actually sent by women. 65% of those uh, messages are actually, or those transactions are received by women. So this is a company where women uh, take uh, financial uh, uh, upstream at the world level, at the worldwide level, and we take it very seriously. And Luisa was just mentioning that there are a few men here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here indeed, because this is a theme that has really touched everybody. And it has to touch everybody, not only on written codes of conduct, which have to be written in companies and corporations. We at Western Union, we have this codes that actually touches on the attitudes that leaders must have, attitudes that uh, employees have. And also, uh, an important theme is how to report the harassment problems. And this is something 
where people do not feel so comfortable to touch upon those issues. So the company has to open up those channels, those channels for reporting for, for zero tolerance. I think changes within corporations start from sometimes rather small attitudes. I have some examples. I had my, my son 10 days ago, and many people in the company came to me and said, now you're going to see that your wife is going to ask you for help uh, changing diapers. Uh, and she's not going to ask me for any help. I'm going to change my son's diapers because I, I have to do that. This type of thought, however small it is, or it may be, this is where it all starts. And as leaders, we have to start um, you know, fostering that. And we have to be very strict within this uh, zero tolerance policy. So that uh, is uh, the basis for Western Union, too. And we have to increase diversity. There are research efforts saying that uh, companies that enjoy diversity, gender uh, diversity, uh, nationality diversity, they have a 35% better performance than companies within the same sector, the same industry, uh, by comparison with the average. So those are points that we do have to address. It's uncomfortable, but once you do it, you unlock many things. You unlock participation, you unlock economic growth, you unlock better performance because all the challenges of this fourth industrial revolution cannot be taken alone by any power group that existed there historically. Uh, if we don't listen better, I, I love that the key thing here is to, to listen and we're killing the voices, sometimes literally, but at the very least metaphorically keeping down a big part of the population, we're never gonna take off. But this is starting to change. And as you say, even simple things like men doing an important part of the housework. All over the world, that's a challenge, not just in Latin America yeah. either, and, uh, and it makes a difference. But I wanted to send it briefly to the audience before we come back. What you sense is trying to emerge that we should include in important meetings for leaders here like the W20. What would you like to hear maybe in more detail um, in the next 10 or 12 minutes about what has started to happen that we could really accelerate as a community? So. We have someone here in the back. A microphone's coming. Buenas tardes. Um, yo lidero una compañía. Now, talking about my employees, uh, most of them are men. We have managed to develop this very strong corporate culture, and we work well together. However, when this theme, the gender theme comes up, I always emphasize the importance of really uh, appreciating or giving value to women. So we're starting this uh, gender capacity building process, and it's difficult to find uh, those uh, sources. And they claim that they have to be equal without uh, giving much importance to women. So my question is, how are the ways in which we could respond to this kind of argument when they understand that we women should play an important role in those positions which were not available to women in the past uh, without We'll take a couple more, one here in the front. I am a Global Shaper from Mexico. And I was wondering about the response from the Me Too uh, movement and all of the other movements against sexual harassment. And the response that came from France it was saying that uh, it was a rather of a cultural issue. I would like to know whether it is a cultural issue in Latin America or we have eventually internalized violence uh, up to a certain point that it became something normal, something cultural that we should not fight. My name is Cynthia. I am also a global shaper in Costa Rica. We have advanced as far as identifying gender rights in the organizations by means of the certification provided by the government. At the same time, we did experience some advances, advancements, but politically, 
we have felt that uh, we have taken some steps back. I would like to know whether that also happens in other countries. And this concept that has come about is the uh, gender ideology, meaning gender has become somewhat of a negative word as we have advanced in terms of uh, raising awareness about equality, which is convenient for all parts, a political context developed where we have observed some uh, backward movement because we started to sort somewhat fear those concepts. Good morning, my name is Aura Sifo. I am from the uh, Bogota hub. I'm also a global shaper. Three years ago, I lived in France and I worked for a while for the first time. I worked in France and I had the opportunity of working with a great mentor who actually pushed my professional career forward, bringing me to a leadership position, so much so that a colleague once came up to me and said, how difficult it is to be yourself. And I said, well, I never really stopped to think about it. Yeah, he said, well, you represent three minorities in this company. You're a woman, you're young, and you're from Colombia. So I didn't have an answer to give at that moment because I had not even realized that I had been labeled as such. But indeed, for the others, that's how I was labeled. I had indeed studied. I had uh, become an empowered woman if co compared to a, a rural woman. And I had to understand that those would, be, would have to be transformed into my strengths. So my question to you is, how do you work in your own environment in order to allow women to understand that many of the things that are considered weaknesses by society, how can they be transformed into strengths so that they can contribute to society or to a company, as in my case? To summarize, but this is the kind of conversation we should be having. Alguien más? Bueno, nos quedan. I feel this is the energy that we want to unleash. Just imagine all these <laughs> young, empowered beings, humans, men and women, acting to change barriers in tech, uh, uh, to think what Me Too means here, to understand that sometimes we get gaps, but then politics, sometimes with populist movements, often allied to some bad use of religion, try to take us back. Uh, so give us a little bit of a quick what, what can be done and how we can include some more of this so that we come next year and we have a f we're further along. We don't have next year the same conversation. First of all, answering about the women. Obviously, um, companies have to understand that uh, women are making decisions about the car they're going to buy. So women are making decisions about the market. They're deciding the market. So uh, the best thing is when things come to their own maturity time. So uh, it has been proven that women in top management positions, and the better uh, it is. Uh, so we have to be able to speak the uh, you know, male uh, language of numbers, and that provides a very strong argument. Secondly, I'd like to stir the following. When companies join these movements uh, with in full strength, when we have these reporting channels, when we bring about some research efforts and bringing men to our sides from those 90 uh, reports that we have had, 30% of those reports were made by men because uh, we work with many men who are going to be uh, father of women. They're going to be the, the vo those voices. And we have this secretary that speaks three languages. Then they have to um, bring an end to those uh, limiting beliefs. So uh, somebody said that a woman came and she was hurt. So please take a look. Call her. And we have this uh, supporting uh, structure. And I. I, I'd like to tell the companies that it's not expensive. We would like to ask you to do that, and I'd like to offer you this research material to all of you who have um, published that in the Claudia magazine just last week. This uh, research effort involves all levels of employee, all the way from the uh, you know, luggage carrier to the top director, because everybody was brought around the table to talk about what sexual harassment is, what, what moral harassment is, and what are things that you don't like to see taking place in this unit. And we have um, brought about six things that they really don't want to see happening. So we're working first on the education side of it because we cannot tell men not to make passes at women because they have been brought up in that kind of environment. And um, we're telling them, stop making advances uh, uh, on women. 
making passes because you're going to lose your space all over the world. The first thing that came up was, you know, like play, play time. When they start harassing, they say it's play time. So we're working in order to avoid play time in the company. Because that's like, you know, that's based on black humor, actually. And the second thing is uh, undo exhibition, more harassment. People don't like to be called their attention in front of other people. Also, uh, inappropriate physical contact. I was really struck when I saw that uh, there's lots of uh, undo physical contact in companies. People don't like it, but it happens. So we're working towards uh, having people understand that we don't want them to do that because in our company, we, we embrace people, we hug people, and we kiss. This is Brazilian way of uh, greeting people. This is why I decided to develop this company in order to avoid removing things which are part of the, the culture, but to make people aware of that. The other point is going beyond the limit. Nobody knows what the limit is. And that's what we're working on. What's your limit? That's what we're working on. What is no good? And the idea of respect was very often. The word discrimination was also very much present, but nobody can actually explain what discrimination is all about. So my proposal, and that's what the company has been doing all along, Christina, they've been talking about, they have to stop and talk. We say, we're not going to fire you, but you have to apologize and stop doing it so that we can actually bring to surface whatever happened. So we have this uh, research effort. Might have been one of the biggest efforts that has ever been made that we're now working on the educational process. Now, all sexual and moral harassment in our company for many years now, Marcelo can, can testify to that, is innegotiable. And my proposal that includes that I'd like to say that I'm really concerned with rural women. Our movement is working hard on that because that's a very you know underprivileged position. They work from you know from uh, dawn to to dusk, and it's very difficult. So I'd like to ask companies. We had this example in one of our offices. Uh, her husband would like to go and harass her during work every day. So we started with our uh, reporting channel, the uh, women's channel, it was called. He just stopped going there because he was afraid of uh, being known for that characteristic throughout the company. So I'd like to ask all the companies to join that effort. We are developing this uh, bulletin. It's like a manual to tell you how you can actually join this movement. And it's not really expensive. We I'm, I'm going to, ch I'm going to, yeah, we're going to have a summary in, in the past few minutes um, to close. To have um, women grow and become part of the company, we have to be aware, first of all, we have to be aware, develop our own awareness. Perhaps not uh, full awareness, I don't like to differentiate because we're not going to be addressing women as a, uh, any, uh, at any lower level. As a leader in a meeting with everybody around us, we are all equal, but in the background, yeah, we do have uh, programs in place in our company. People have noticed that we have people from the top management level onwards, um, that there are very few women in those uh, levels. So we have put in place some programs that uh, raise the following question. Why are there so few women in managerial positions? We have noticed that uh, it's not really a matter that we hire less women or more women in our company. In the internal hierarchy, women cannot climb the ladder. And that's what we've noticed, and we don't know why. We now have a specific program looking at bringing all women together in a company to help them raise, uh, to help them rise uh, in importance. So the first thing in a company, we have to notice clearly that this is happening within the company. This is a starting point. And then we have the tolerance policies, zero tolerance policies. Then we have the internal policies in terms of how to address these issues, but um, awareness raising is the first thing. We are not supposed to hide what's happening. A lot has been mentioned about companies, so I'd like to add some of the stuff that I've heard. For instance, the role of uh, trade unions, that should be a strong role in these issues. 
a voice that uh, is somehow protected because we often think about large companies, but small companies can be a problem as well. So the role trade unions play is really very important in order to be able to address those issues. Also, public policies. We talk about it very often, but uh, awareness rating and uh, stirring um, cultural changes, uh, t changing weaknesses into strengths and in compliance with the law. In most of the countries that we have observed, particularly uh, within the realm of the uh, W20, we have systems that we have to just enforce the law. Monitoring is also a very important effort. And, and, and discuss the ways we have to go about changing. We have to start, we have already started, and we're going to be working together each and every one of you from your city, from your companies, you can implement major changes, civil society, men, women, all genders. We can all work towards change, towards changing the situation into something that is economically positive, not only because of rights, as was said before here. This is a major economic opportunity, and this is a legal issue, really. And this is how we're going to incorporate the labor job. In order to include uh, rural women, we already in order to have many decision-making uh, forums, uh, the more women, the more decisions will be made and the more profitable the companies will be, the greater the GDP of those countries will be. It's also important to work on the issue of violence. In this um, case, and the labor market will be addressing violence in general terms and will be able to achieve greater peace. Muchas gracias a todos y me siento muy optimista de que empecemos desde el principio teniendo una conversación de este nivel. Así que muchas gracias y que les vaya muy bien en el resto del evento.